Welcome back. This is Through Our Lens. My name is D. Chorus. Smoke D. F. D. Elemental. And this is Through Our Lens. All right, so we're doing our second conversation about economics in a sense, right? We're talking about perceived poverty. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a reason why it's, the word perceived is, is dead. Mm -hmm. um, we are told that our community is poor, right? The black community is poor, you know. Um, but is that really the case? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's dive in. What, what, how, can we, how can we define poverty? Well, by the legal standpoint, it's somebody that make fifteen to twelve thousand dollars a year. Mm, that's the poverty level. That's, that's the poverty, poverty, that's that's poverty level. level. It yeah. also varies between state to state in your community because fifteen thousand dollars in New York is definitely way, way, way below. It's under fifty thousand uh, dollars in New York mm. for the for the for the poverty line. So if you're making less than that in New York City. Uh, you know, check each person with their state, their county, their country, whatever. It's, it's always, it changes to, to, depending on the area. But it's the, the, the when you go into mean, mediums, most, when you do statistics, mm. it goes into that level below the average. Mm. So, so you're saying like there's states that 15000 a year, you could actually live off that in that state? Certain states. Uh, certain counties. Certain counties. Certain counties. Certain I'll say certain counties. Okay, okay. Certain, certain states, but certain okay. counties. Definitely. Okay. Okay, so so poverty, we said the poverty floor is what? Between 15000 to $12,000. To $12,000. So I would take it that if somebody was getting that money, that was their uh, yearly earnings, they would probably need a lot of services, mm. right? Yes. To, to like, because... I can't imagine somebody paying rent, like being able to pay rent, making fifteen thousand dollars a year. Like, they would have to have like eight, like um, <laughs> Section Eight or the Section Eight, some type of supplement income that supplements the offset um, public assistance. Mm -hmm. So that, there's programs out there that help people that's low income. And the, yeah, this is here yeah. in the U.S. It is not. This is not global. This is just the U.S. <laughs> um, thing because poverty. Mm. It is 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 a uh, it affects you know it's a, it's a global condition um, that affects everyone every human being uh, can affect any, any any type of human being but mm. we just talk about U.S. poverty mm. and African Americans. So so <laughs> with this uh, understanding in this country we have a social program right. to help people who are kind of like fell below the um, the floor right. And maybe they're on the floor, right? Um, they're at the level where they consider you below the poverty line. That's what yes. I mean by floor. So we have these programs that, social programs, and I keep saying social programs because I know a lot of Americans be against social stuff, but there, there are some programs designed to help people who are not really um, high, in high earning occupations. What are some of these occupations that people may have that pay 15000 Like, I, I can't even imagine on him what that would be. Teachers, you some, some teachers, uh, you know, not getting paid properly. You have uh, health, uh, home health care workers. You have uh, people in, in service. You have, uh, you know, there was a fight for um, better pay for service workers to work in fast food chains. Mm. So that was, you know... I, I, yeah. They, they, they had to get on public assistance or welfare just to work in certain places like um, these big corporations, Walmart, Amazon, and nothing like that. So, I mean, there's they, structures set into play um, for these big corporations to profit off of people's poverty. Yeah, I, I would mm -hmm. say fast food restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, certain low-level jobs where it, it requires minimal education. So, I, I, I'm thinking because... Like and I, and I ask you like this question for a real reason because I'm trying to imagine like I couldn't I couldn't fathom a job that doesn't pay you enough right so <laughs> but you go into these stores all the time right and you and you patronize these stores right we we do that we like we go they they have the lowest prices you know so that those lowest prices come at a cost right mm -hmm. we may not know the cost we 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 know the benefit because we want to pay the lowest price mm -hmm. but you know. Um, one of them, one of them, not just fast food, but I, I've I've come to the understanding that some waiters are um, tips 
mostly tips Works and they have like a, a very um a basic wage which is way below what's minimum wage right now um, about 15 dollars some in, in, states in York, in, it depends what state you go yeah, to yeah some states yeah, but some, new york 15 dollars an hour that's that's new york city so so 15 dollars an hour is 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 above the poverty line right Consider, Consider, yes, yes I'm gonna put this quotes. Yeah, you put, put the quotes, quotes right? put the quotes, yeah. Be because, because what I'm understanding is this, just because you got a job paying $15 an hour does not mean you're working 35 hours a week. Right, that's correct. So you could be getting $15 an hour and work part-time and some businesses kind of arrange it so you don't get full-time status because they might have to pay health care, right. so um, sick days, so, they cut so, your hours. so it's cut your hours to yeah. keep you under the, keep you from getting the benefits that right. they have to pay, what they call fringe benefits, right? To keep you from getting the benefits, but it looks good on paper. We're paying this person fifteen dollars an hour, right. but we might have had this person work uh, fifteen hours a week. You're right. Yeah. So they don't have to pay out their their full benefit amount if they're working full time. And again, so we go to these stores and we patronize them, and we uh, right. You know, we buy their products, buy their products, and keep them um, rich. That's why the rich get richer yeah. because we keep on. Patronizing the business, because even, but even if they full time fifteen dollars mm -hmm. an hour, it's still about twenty two to twenty five to twenty seven thousand dollars a year. Right. So that's still it's like this. It's not a lot of money. Right. So th th there's there's no such thing as middle class anymore. I think that's. Uh, uh, I, I, so like that's that's interesting you saying that because, I would consider that to be me, in my household, right. Um, and one of the things that my wife and I have conversations about is if we suffer a blow, if we take a hit, there's no program for us. We just take a hit, yeah. you know? And um, a lot of people in our bracket, we talk about um, how we can't get these subsidies, but we, they, but we get taxed so, People could have the subsidy. <laughs> like they tax the they tax the stuffings out of us. You're gonna hear me use that word a lot. They tell, they tax they tax the stuffings out of us. So we pay, we we you know it's it's a lot of tax for the middle class. Right? Mm -hmm. If you don't if you don't know how to have a business or you know um, claim deductions that 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 actually is is going toward business and everything. But yeah, I, I I'm just I'm just like I'm just having trouble just wrapping my brain around there are people making $15,000 a year, $12,000 a year, and that is their salary. Like, do you, what, 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 and I'm just asking this because I'm just trying to imagine, like, I can't imagine me being in this position, but How do you work multiple you jobs? Like, what do you do? Is that your only job, or like what do you do? It, de it depends on the individual. It depends on what system they're in, because there's some people that know how to utilize the system, mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 a catch twenty two because it's like uh, stabilized rent places. You have to be making a certain amount of money to even be eligible to to occupy that space. So you can't be over something. You can't be over a certain amount. That's the way HPD works, right? That's the way like HPD with Section 8 I'm talking about. They work that way where they say if you make over a certain amount of money, you can't get the subsidy, right? So the, 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 the thing that I kind of see with that problematic for me is it, it does it de-incentivize you to do better? Because now... If you do better, if it feels like you're gonna get punished and you gotta pay the full rent, the market rate rent, yeah. right? Um, it does. Does it? Does it make you? Does it make you say, "Oh, I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna work on overtime, or I'm not gonna take on this second job, or I'm not gonna do this because my rent is gonna go up because I'm gonna be cut off the subsidy, or you might be getting food stamps, right? Yeah. So I know there's certain rules with food stamps right? okay, that's, that's you can't make a certain amount of money and get food stamps so it's like do i do you not do any work or do you do you have your boss or do you not work all the hours to keep you under the radar to qualify for these subsidies that's i know these are questions and the reason why i'm saying is because my mother went through that right when i was a kid my mother was like you can't work on the books 
because it's going to affect my budget and I'm not going to get my whatever that subsidy was. It could be Section 8 at the time, but I'm not going to get my Section 8. So a lot of the jobs I was working was off the books. It, it, it's still like that today, so I don't yeah. think it hasn't changed today because, mm -hmm. you know, people that's living in NYCHA, um, what they do now, your income is based off. Mm -hmm. Your rent is based, based off your income. So it's going back to what you said earlier of the mind state people are being put in right. just due to not being able to excel because there's a penalty with excelling, right? So the market value rent in New York City, I'm saying, for a, a studio apartment, it's like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month. Right. So a studio. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, that's New York, New York, New York City. Yeah. But again, people always try to, you know, the system is not really uh, geared to you to be promoted or to excel. Mm -hmm. So people are always trying to find loopholes and ways around the system of how, how to get it. That's how it's just structured. So. Uh, for us, it's like, uh, you know, for the, especially with the black community, we have resources sometimes. We have, we know, we know the system sometimes better than anybody else. <laughs> so we can navigate it and get around it. But, you know, in the, in the community, we have resources and wealth that we, we don't necessarily tap into if we collectively work together. Mm -hmm. So I think how we can you know just move forward with some of these things is you know how to manage things because you know how to get around certain systems and certain ways of doing things but you can do this to uplift your community and list people around you mm -hmm. so knowing the system and knowing how to navigate things around and you can budget you know you don't have to always patronize these big corporations who would have no um input or no uh you know stake in you doing well or you growing so I think, you know, collectively as black people, we have to be a conscious effort to build wealth within our community by consciously um, doing so. Well, I, 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 it, it sounds good and yes, it needs to happen, but I think that the challenge is somebody got a little cheaper price. Right, that's the challenge because, and that's, that's actually strategic, uh -huh. right? Um, there have been all types of studies on human nature and how to sell. Mm -hmm. Speci specifically, there's a documentary called How to Sell to Black People. Mm. How to Sell to the Negro, is, that's exactly what it's called. And it was an old one, and it says the Negro wants to show that they have um, status. status in society and they want to buy the expensive things to show that they have, so this, it's, it's, it's a scientific study. right? And they sent this to the people who manufacture expensive things to say, this needs to be your target market. Right. But this, that's, that's, that's uh, again, um, perceived and psychological... Uh, warfare. Warfare or, or, and also marketing and advertising. And it's just wanted to be accepted by your oppressor or fit into a society that doesn't really accept you. Right. They didn't want you in the first place. So we have to basically first decolonize our minds and uh, emancipate yourself from the... Uh, Get off, get off the white bread, mm -hmm. um, and and you know educate yourself and do do for self. You know it's, going back into the power of doing for self, having for self, and providing your own, being your own uh, savior, and not not looking for something outside of yourself or outside of your community to be so. That's and that that's, that's, that goes into the psychology of um, of of how, how we got here in the first place. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's going to be very hard yeah. because I think that we've been conditioned for a long time, like just colonize, as you say, you know, conditioned because minds. it's like we we buy these expensive cars, no, we can't afford it. Just jeans and clothes, and you know, I was talking to a young guy. He said, "I'm buying a pair of Mary jeans." And I'm like, "How much they cost? Thousand dollars." Thousand dollars for a pair of jeans, right? right. It's, just, it's just a name band, high end fashion, but you're still living in these conditions. Your mom's is living in these conditions, so it's like you know we we have economics, but we're conditioned. It's going back, you know, we're brainwashed to think a certain type of way. We don't realize that we we are rich. Well, yeah, you, you know, or, or we we have money and right. we 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 can invest. We, we can do better. We can have our own businesses, but we have this colonized mentality that 
it doesn't allow us to break free. Right. And, and, that, and that, that, that's in masses. Yeah, and that, that goes back to like a, a, like a psychological thing of trying to place value on things. We want to explain uh, expensive things and wear expensive things and have it use expensive things to put value on ourselves mm. because we've been dis disvalued for so long. So mm. psychologically, you know, it brings me value. Oh, I have a, a, a you know thousand dollar pair of jeans. I'm 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 somebody. I I, I, I present value into this world. Or I'm, I'm driving a the, the the latest expensive car. I'm valuable now. You know, I'm more valuable. But it's a psychological you know thing that people try to project. Mm. Um, understanding that, you know, you're valuable just because we we we're basically created by God. So I mean, we, we're just human beings. So I mean, we. We, you're, you are valuable not because of what you have, but with the content within inside you, um, and what you can offer. So the psychological thing, um, you know, mindset is, you know, we do bring value into this world, but we have to deep prioritize what and how we value, we'll place value on things. Uh, uh, this this is blowing my mind. The fact that there's thousand dollar jeans. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna say this, so if anybody capitalizes on this, I want my cut. <laughs> they better be fart resistant or something. I don't know. They, they gotta have some kind of special feature to them that you could rip all day and nobody knows something. Right. They gotta have something to it to be, cause, cause what do you do with jeans? You wear them, right? right? Same thing with, with a car, get you from point A to point B. A diamond is a piece of jewelry, gold is like you wear it, right? right? It doesn't. It doesn't. Um. It doesn't clean your toilet. It doesn't do your taxes. It's something that you value, right? You have a value. Where do you get your value from? I don't know, but you have a value, and you think it's precious, and you're willing to spend. Um, some people hard earned money. Some people not hard earned money, right? But you're willing to spend your money on this thing. Like, I I, I see people with you know diamonds and stuff, and I'm like. A diamond just sits there, right? But, but it doesn't. But, yeah. but, but people see it. Maybe like I don't. I don't understand. Like if some, somebody see it and say, "Oh, I want that." It's envious. Like, yeah, but what I, is it? Uh, but if if you have a diamond as an asset, meaning that if you buy a diamond or a piece of jewelry that's going to accumulate, is going to appreciate in value mm -hmm. over time, mm -hmm. you can use that as an asset. You, you don't also you don't have to file that on your taxes because it's, it's, a, it's a something it's tangible. It's a tangible. You can put, you use it as an heirloom. You can use it as something that brings value and it's going to uh, bring more value over time. Mm -hmm. So this is why people, you have rich people, buy art and buy things that's going to appreciate in value mm -hmm. and uh, not necessarily you know depreciate in value. Mm -hmm. So we have to have be, be more in a, a mindset of bringing assets, uh, things that are going to. Uh, bring more value within time instead of buying things that are going to depreciate in time. Like buying a, the, the first fly car that as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's going to depreciate in value. Or buying a thousand dollar pair of jeans as soon as you wear them, they're used. Right. But it, now now if you have something that's a collector's item, mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, put away and you're going to, you know, have an investment. it. An investment, you know, is, is you want to have it. But it's not, that's nothing wrong to, to, mm -hmm. to have nice things and to to, to uh, spend money on your right things. But you have to make sure that it's be something benefiting you, your community, and, right. and your surroundings or helping some type of cause. Or it's going to bring value into your life. Mm -hmm. Because a pair of jeans are, are still a pair of jeans. You know, if even it costs $1,000 or $10. You're still going to wear them the same way. But it, it's, our priorities is, is effed up, man. It's, it's the bottom line. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to pay a thousand dollars, James. You, you look at people be in line for these Jordans, right? Mm -hmm. It's just in line. Like, so the priorities, and then they don't have college money, some of them, right? College money, they don't have life insurance, they don't have health insurance, right? Like, our priorities is just jacked up. Like, and that needs to be, you know, looked at, talked about, because we can't be out here buying thousand dollars pay your Mary's but you ain't got no life insurance or health insurance right and then your parents something happened to you you got to do a GoFundMe or you got to do a collection or the, the group got to gab up like it's, it's it's going back to what I said earlier it's a sad state of where we at now like our, our mental state is really bad now because we don't realize how far gone we are mm. Like, we, we really don't own anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? During the pandemic, you know, everybody was scheming and scamming and they was able to get access to this money. 
but they didn't buy any anything. Right. No it, land. Like, no assets. No, no, no property. No. Like it's it's just a bunch of fly guys driving around in cars, and car depreciate. You know. Some of the jury's not really real because people got to understand there's different cuts of diamonds and different levels of diamonds. Like, so it's just like the mentality right now is in a sad state. Like, mm -hmm. and I don't know what we can do at this point, you know, to help the masses. You know, there's going to be some pockets of people that we can get this message to. And then there's going to be a masses of people that just don't want to hear it because they're conditioned to think a certain type of way. Here's what I want to say. You say, you know, you don't know what we could do, right? These two books up here? No. Oh, yeah, Somebody wrote it. these books a long yeah. time ago and said, this is what you could do. And I've, I've read these books. So as I said before, like in many other podcasts we had, my children read these books. There was nothing different from what you're saying, um, Mukti. It's, it's, this, it's the same. He's saying this, but he laid it out. He right. said, invest in this, do this, do that, do that, do that, boom, 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 boom. And it, it, it's heartbreaking. He's still alive. He's still doing his thing. He's a millionaire. He's doing his thing. It's heartbreaking that the organizations that he said that needed to be set up was never set up. Right. And, and it, I'm trying to understand, is it by choice that it was never set up? Because you said, we, like you said, we stuck. I agree 100%. I, I feel like we are going through life with blinders on. And we are relying on the people who created the problem to solve the problem. Like, we don't have autonomy and we don't have intelligence and expertise. We'll, we point at somebody else and say, give us, give us, give us. And don't get me wrong, reparations is in order. You just catch phrase. Cut, cut the check. Cut the check. Cut the check. Reparations is in order. But there are things that we can do ourselves to change our condition. Almost immediately. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. But it, it goes back to the, you know, about self-awareness, about self-consciousness and being intentful of what you're doing. But also making sure that you're, 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 you're getting off of this trauma train that many of the people are us on. And a lot of people do things for survival. You know, they do it off of emotion and they do it for, all for survival. Because we, you know, I think it's another, another line. Oh, we're survivalists turned to consumers. Oh, That's yeah. What talk about. Yeah, so I mean... You, 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 you're coming from an emotional state that you always wanted to be accepted because you've been rejected for so long, right? And to be accepted you, with, within your peers, within your community, you know, you, you want to have nice things, you want to you want to you want to shine, you want to you want to bling on somebody, even even uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 it came from Cash Money. I remember when that came out, bling bling. Yeah, right? bling. People want people want to shine. I mean, right. it's just. It just you want to stunt, you want to shine, you want to sh sh shine bright. There's nothing wrong with that because you know e even before we even came here, we had things and we were, we were shining, we were thing, but we did it in a different way. But you know, to to be recognized, to be you know, uh, to be uh, uh, recognized by your peers, by your community, by your your, your whatever uh, uh, circle that you're in, people want to do that. That's just a social thing. That's a psychological. A thing of trying to be accepted, but it's it's also being conscious of how you do that and what extent you're, you're doing it to, is what we have to be aware and conscious of. Because uh, uh, you know, in, in our culture, you know, even in hip hop, we, we, we want to shine, we want to blame, we want to we want to we want to shine bright and, and be recognized. So it's 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 okay, but it's you have to do it to a limit that it's not. Detrimental or harmful to yourself. You get like me? somebody and, and watching you and then seeing your address and then showing up. <laughs> right. That's that's the, if, if you live in the hood, you, you understand that you can't shine too bright because you know you got you're gonna get got. Targets. You're gonna be a target. But you know you, you also you don't want to shine so bright that you know you, you you're, you're putting yourself into debt. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You, you you're living beyond your means mm. and that you you're you're so caught up in trying to impress other people that you're really hurting yourself. Mm. So, you know, we want to be conscious of how, you know, we're, 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 we're trying to be shine and you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to shine. You, you don't want to dangle, uh, you know, a, a fresh pair of meat in, in, in amongst of a, a cage of, of wolves because right. you're going to get eaten. And that's like the hood. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you stunting too much, 
you know, there's people out here really starving, and they're gonna you're gonna get got. Hey, so it makes it ribs is touching. Don't make yeah, you wait, right? Exactly. So but I mean, yeah. you you have to you got to be modest in what you try to do, I th- and you know, conscious of what you what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I think we gotta shine in a different way. We we, we, we supposed to shine. Like right. we, we we natural people, we black people, we supposed to shine, but just in a different way. I, I agree. Don't, I don't think like you don't see rich rich people with all the jewelry. Like you, you you just don't see it. You don't see you know they might have a certain type of watch that nobody know, but the diamonds, the big chains, the five chains, like they you don't see the billionaires wearing a jewelry like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a mindset that, you know what I'm saying, that been opposed on. But I have a question. Like, why do you think 30-plus years Dr. Chloe Anderson had these books, right? Why do you think these books are not in schools? Because, I'm going to tell you the reason. These books, um, one, it empowers black people, right? And it tells black people, you need to be responsible for yourself, right? And it also tells black people... It's not hopeless. This is what you need to do. So again, it gets you out of the out of the victimized mode. I'm a victim to rather say, okay, I recognize that there's a problem. Now I could address the problem because somebody laid it out. And if you put this in schools, then we won't be the bottom of the barrel. Right? And society needs a bottom of the barrel. According to society, they need a lower caste group. Of people. And the truth of the matter is this. We are being miseducated in school so we can always be in a lower caste. That's what the truth is. So th- think about this. Through public school, kindergarten, all the way up, they never talk any self-affirming history of black people. You get that when you go to college. And you <laughs> don't learn the atrocities. Yeah. Yeah. But then you don't learn the atrocities that they did in your first um, K through 12. You you get the super simplified uh, 15 second version. They were slaves. Okay. What about what happened with slavery? Like there's this volumes of books you could write about what happened in slavery. But I was I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and watch a lot of debates and, and all of this stuff. What I learned is a lot of white people's concerns is they don't want to be seen as monsters. That's why they don't want us teaching this stuff. They don't want this stuff in school because it's going to be at some point somebody's going to say these people are monsters because of what happened, right? Not because of what you perceive. It's because of what actually happened. So their approach is don't teach it. Because we don't want people to say that about us. Oh, you concerned about your rep now? You wasn't concerned about your rep 400 years ago? When, when your ancestors was doing it? Now you concerned about your rep because you want to be seen as, uh, what do they call it, um, benevolent people? If, if that's even apply, app, applicable, I would say malevolent is more applicable. But just, so the reason why it's not in schools is because this is a solution to a problem. Not everybody wants problems to be solved. Because with the existence of problems, you have a level of control. So this goes back to our original conversation, the perception of poverty. Because I believe black people are poor here. And it translates through our actions to poverty, but we don't understand that our choices make us poor, not our earning power. You see immigrants who come here, they all pile up in an apartment, they all pay the rent. They're not making a whole lot of money, but they know how to pull their money together and not waste it. Pull our resources. We waste money. We waste money. How many trips are you going to make to the corner store to get a hero every day <laughs> when you could go buy the sandwich meat if you chose to eat that at a store and make 10 sandwiches and still have money left over, but you want to go to the corner store and do that? Fast food is fast, but it's expensive if you continuously eat that way. How many meals do you eat a day? Average person eats three meals. 
You don't cook. You don't buy groceries so you can make your own food. So now every time you go out, you spend in money. $20 easy a day. $20 could get you several days of food if you go buy the right things. Well, not, not now. It's inflation now. It's, it's, oh, well, it's, it's gas and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything is inflation. It's inflation, it's inflation but, now. But that's the concept. Right. So, but, but that's, again, it is a concept, but it's also, you know, it's structural how, you know, specifically, you know, this population of African Americans have been caught up in this system. And, you know, not taking the immigrant approach because we, we really weren't immigrants. We were basically taken here and we were kidnapped, uh, kidnapped and entwined into this system. Human, you know, tra tra so human trafficking. Again, you got to you gotta go to the truth of the matter of who we are and where, how we came here and what, what, what the well, system is. Some of us. Some well, of some us. Some of us. Some of us already here. We, 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 got, we, here. Got, right. we got, everybody got here in different ships, but we all right. in the same boat. Right. We still got the same beast that we're looking at. And we, we still got the same problems of this economic um, and uh, uh, economic situation and just better quality of life. Mm -hmm. So we got here in different, we may have got here any other different types ways. of way, but we all in it together right now. Mm -hmm. So we got to make this thing work and we got to work together so we can make it better for everyone. So, and, and, that, and that energy and that strength, um, we have to look at ourselves as a, a, a block of, of wealth, resources, and, and power. And the same thing, how we do it for, for, for economically, we can do it politically, and we can change our society. I, I'll meet you up here. I, 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 I believe that you're, I feel that you're on point. If we could take what you said and put it in a vaccine and give it to black people, I think we'd be okay. The problem, I think, is not every black person feels Thinks that, that way. way. Because no. some black people come here they didn't come here under the same um, stresses that we got here, mm -hmm. right? They came as immigrants, and there's things set up for them. Right. So there's things set up for them. They're not going to complain about a country that's helping them, right? right? Even though the same person that's helping them stole it from us, right? So we can't get what they get. But if there was a way, I think, I think one of the approaches is if there was a way for immigrants to have communication with the black community, with us who's from here, who's here, who was here before them, to understand how they could, we could all work together because we're not doing that. Right. You got groups that's like, well, I'm getting this from them, so I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm going to do what they say. And they have different, they have different perspectives. Uh, black people are not a monolith, right. meaning that we all don't don't think alike, all the, don't have the same type of cultures, but. Again, we, we're in this, this pot called America right now, so we have to work things together. And certain things are, 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 are universal problems that we all share. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if a, a, a police officer comes to your car, he isn't going to act if you're African, African-American, or Cuban, or anything like you say. He's going to say, nigga, get out the car. So some things we have to work together with. Mm -hmm. So those, those people that have been here, we know the system, and those people who are immigrating, we have to just include them, but also enlighten them and school them on what's the, the, the ups and downs and lowdowns and the, the cracks and crevices of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we could work together because there's, 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 pl there's plenty of learning and exchange that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a lot of bridges that need to be bridged mm -hmm. so we can have economic and international development as well mm -hmm. because we they have resources they have some, a lot of things to bring to the table and we have a lot of things to bring to the table we have our experiences and they have their experiences we could come together and say oh how can we take these experiences and make something even better mm -hmm. so it's definitely schooling what's going on what has been going on but also welcoming what can be done new and to grow mm -hmm. well, I kind of I ain't gonna say I disagree with y'all, mm -hmm. but I got a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I feel like people gotta educate themselves. I'm gonna keep saying this because wherever we go on a trip, we know not to go to that neighborhood because we might get robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go out the country, most likely you only could stay on the resort because over here it's no good. We keep letting people off the hook that come here and treat American blacks bad, right? They, they, they were colonized in their country. They come here with that same mentality. So I think we as people got to start saying, hey, you got to be accountable. You got to know 
you can't just come here and then expect to be educated, right? Because the time I'm taking to educate you, I'm taking away from this kid that's been here that need educating, that need help, right. that then went through the trauma and everything else. So I can't take the time and energy and give to you. Not to say I can't help you, but you got to come here with some cognitive understanding of how America worked and how it have done harm to black people. Like, that's, that's something. And another thing, like you said about the poor thing. I, our people are poor mentally. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key where it's, you know, it, it needs to start being a conversation and holding people accountable. We got to hold these politicians that's in our community, that's selling out. You know, when you look at New York, it, it, it's gentrified. People that, you know, it, it been took it again. So you got old people barely able to live because they got to choose between buying medicine or, or paying the rent because they're already on a fixed income, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, that goes back to the politicians putting these policies in place and these laws in place that slowly but surely pushing the elders out right. and allowing people to come in. But, well, but, well, I think that um, the education part for, for immigrants who come here, it's an interesting conversation. I, I, I understand everything you're saying, and, and I agree with most of it, but here's a challenge. What happened to us is not being taught anywhere except by us, right? So these people from these other countries, because I'm a, I'm a college professor, most, there's rarely African Americans in my class. But conversations come up like, why are black people so mad? They're not taught. They have the Hollywood version of us, which is we criminals and crooks and thieves and we baby mamas and we into all this drama. That's what they have of us. They didn't come ask us. So who, they do need to have a certain level of education and it can't be our responsibility to educate them, right? It can't be, but there needs to be a rules of engagement and a, and a, a set up established communication channel, which also does not exist. They didn't learn about stuff until I started telling them. And guess what? Africans from Africa do not take African American history. Well, some don't. A majority of them don't. A majority don't. don't. So they're not no they don't know what happened to us. Like when I started saying stuff and, and I started saying it to East Indians, and they sit there and they look and Chinese people and they say, That happened to y'all here? I'm like, Yeah, you don't right. know that? But but that's that's another thing of like controlling the media and the narrative of, of your community because for so, for so long the narrative and media and imagery of African Americans or people of color has been uh, betrayed by non African Americans or people of European descent. But even living in abroad, you know, you know, first thing I was uh, they asked me about when I was like living in West Africa was like Tupac. Because this is the imagery they had, they had of, of African Americans. So uh, again, it's the perceived imagery and the perceived ideas that they have, and not knowing the whole history behind uh, why people act this way mm -hmm. or why people are perceived this way, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the the whole the whole history behind uh, the, those images and that 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 behavior. So uh, for those those, those people, uh, you know who are immigrating or uh, see these images and, and think this is you know, the imagery of African-Americans. Um, and, and sometimes us as African-Americans have a perceived image of, of, of some of these immigrants um, or even in, in Africa, yeah. you know, of how things are, you know. And, and, and these are images that were shown by our colonizers or those people who oppressed us mm -hmm. to dis discredit or discredit us uh, uh, or people of African descent, because mm -hmm. like you know, you, you know, the first time you saw an imagery of Africa was with, with a, somebody with a with a nose or uh, with a bone in their nose and so called trying to be a cannibal. Or whatever. This is the imagery of, of Africans that Hollywood presents to people, mm -hmm. and it's a false image because you know if you, if you know anything about Africa, this, this is the, the mother of civiliz uh, civilization. You have all types of people from all types of. Uh, backgrounds and you know human beings doing all different types of human things and they have been doing this way before even America has even before you finish that thought I want to just jump in I was watching some archival footage of Dr. Henry Clark mm. and he was saying history has shown that there wasn't cannibalism in Africa but there was in Europe so 
but they said we the cannibals. Right. So I just I just wanted to say that before the thought leave my mind. Right. Um, but yeah, but 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 the idea of um, just 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 black people and the perception and the image that is projected of us is not our image. We didn't put the image out, right? right. So people, like I said, I'm I'm talking with my students and student is ranting about how many baby mothers uh, these guys got and. And I'm like, who told you that was going on at that scale? You know, and she was like, well, this this what you're doing in the country. And my parents told me not to, you know, be around y'all. And just right. that. So so people come here with preconceived notions, preconceived notions right? Of, of to say, Americans. don't mix with these people, don't, don't, don't talk to these people, but get everything that you could get that's only made possible by these people. Right. But who, because they fought for it. Who 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 gave them that? And image. still can't get it. Who gave them that imagery? Who gave right. them that, that information and you know so the same it, snake that bit us bit them but they don't know the snake bit them because the snake came bearing gifts but mm -hmm. they yeah. still got to be accountable yeah because, yeah, 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 yeah because these people are being put in office they they come here they 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 run in they they become an elective officials so it's i believe it's black people duty to to, to make them Learn and understand our culture. So right? how do they make them learn? And this is a, this is a loaded <laughs> question. How do you get them to learn? By doing conversations like this. You see what I'm saying? These why this is why these conversations are necessary. Because I'm gonna tell you, I've, I've posted stuff in the past, and people commented and said, "I was with you until you started talking about race." <laughs> and some people was black. And and I say to them, they said, "No, it's an American thing." No, it's not. With black people, it's about trust. We don't trust y'all. And they don't want to address it, right? We do shows like this, hopefully, with the reach to reach people who are immigrants, who don't know a whole lot about us. We have three different walks of life. You travel the world. I didn't travel the world. You you come from, from restorative justice. I wasn't part of that either, mm -hmm. right? But we have different walks of life, but we, we all understand certain things that exist here. Mm -hmm. And we all understand that a conversation, even regardless of who's responsible, which is not us, we need to have this conversation with the immigrants coming in, saying, this is the experience, these are the things that happen, and this is, so they could get to know the why, right? So I tell my students this a lot, and, and they, my students, they get floored, like to see the look on their face. I said, we, black people, is trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma, and we learn how to function in it. <laughs> That's us. We survive regardless of whatever you do, we're going to find a way to survive. survive. But our survival is not healthy. Right. But the the way we do it. Yeah, because we're, we're survivors, and some of their, their rights, freedoms, and privileges are due to our struggles. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, when we have some immigrants who are coming in, uh, you have some like, people coming from well, Muslim immigrants. You got to understand the, the struggle of like the African American Muslim community that allowed you know wearing the hijab or kufir inside a public space. I mean, before you know, before the, these these things, you know, our fathers and mothers pushed this narrative and pushed this this agenda. Of, so people are allowed these types of freedoms, right. or even the, the voting rights. So I mean. You know, it's only been what forty years, fifty years for the you know you know uh, MLK was was marching and fighting and people were dying to vote mm -hmm. to have a democracy and this is what this whole thing is supposed to be based upon of democracy mm -hmm. of, of every vote counts and we're still fighting for these same things and so, these people so. who are come to this you know and fighting for this democracy you know there's other democracies America is not the only democracy but I mean. And this is supposed to be the ideal place of poor democracy, of the model of democracy, but you know we still don't really have it. So again, our freedom is contingent on you know not saying the world, but I mean all these people who are coming in are basing off the struggles of African Americans who've been fighting this fight for so long since we got here. My my question is: We know we we don't have a democracy. Um, Anybody gave thought to why that is the case where we still don't have the democracy this place is supposed to be? So the freedom's right. Well, economics. Economics. Eco you know, and money money is power, right? Mm. And, and, our, and our money is, is, is all over the place. Right? 
we are a trillion dollar spending force, right? But we don't own too much of anything. A trillion dollars goes to the African American community is what you're saying, right? Yeah. He says that in his books. Yeah. He said is... we have more money than certain countries. Mm hmm and that goes through our hands, 125th Street. Some who passed in GDP. Tons of money goes through 125th Street. How many black store owners is on 125th Street? None. None. They all outside. And they're outside with the, the tables. The, the, the sad part is that this book been out for a while, right? Yeah, 80s. One came out in the 80s. One came out in the 90s. It, and if you go into 100 black households, they probably ain't got a bookshelf. Mm, right? Or they, they got they, books they, full of... Other people's stuff, right? But they they wouldn't have this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is something the forefather was supposed to already had in the library. Right. Like your grandfather should have had right. you read this book, or your father should have had you read this book. So, like, it's, it's it's a generational thing too, as why black economically is the way they are. It's because from generations it's, it's been to to be a worker. Like it hasn't been. It's just now in the last 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's louder to be uh, entrepreneur, to be independent, to have your own business. Even though we had that in the past, mm -hmm. like it, 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 we got away from that and, and just became workers. This is why blacks owe so much women, black women owe so much of student loans, mm -hmm. because we were pushed to be workers. We wasn't pushed to be having our own to break that cycle, to to have that economic freedom, like. Most people do what they do because they don't have the economic freedom, mm, right? right? So it's but it, it was, check it's, the check. Check the check. And but there's a system in play because it was deliberately, uh, we were kept out of certain economic structures. That's what racism is. And that's, yeah. It's that's, economic. It's, it's, it's the racism, you know, is systematic racism and it's systematic oppression that we've been experiencing. That's still we here. Got it, that we still are experiencing. So... You know, we gotta, like I said, break off this, 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 this. We were still, like I said, we're still waking up from a trauma, and we're still in a trauma. But we have to recognize that it is trauma, and we have to fix it because, because the economics of it, you know, it, we're still feeling the effects of it, right. no. and it, and it's still, it's still hurting. You know, it's, just, it's still an open wound that we, we're feeling. Here's my, here's my thirty second <laughs> analysis of why we don't have a, de a democracy. Because cheaters formed the country. And a cheater doesn't care how they win, it's just winning. So, and there's no loyalty in cheating, right? So, if you cheat to get everything you need, then you're going to oppose the people who's going to be like, hey, you cheated, and, and they, they want to out you. But, that, that, <laughs> but that's, that's, that goes back to, again to the root. If you built this whole system and economy or off of cheating, off cheating uh, stealing, robbing, looting, and all this other stuff. You know, it's the, it's the foundation that you, you got you to gotta go to. You got to go to the core. You got to mm -hmm. go to the root. And unfortunately, this root is not necessarily a, a, a healthy or good root. It's rotten to the core. Mm -hmm. So you got to go to the root and find out what's going on with the leaves and the branches and, and the trunk before you just look at a, 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 a leaf and say the whole, you know, you gotta go to the root and that's the root of the problem is the corruption and, and the, the lies that have been told to us of how this place has been built. Right. But, I agree, um, but I wanna add on to that. Like we we, we know that, like we know who, the, who, who, who our enemy is, right? Right. But we got enemies in our own community that we ain't addressing. Yep. Like that's, I think we need to start there before mm -hmm. we can't go to second base without going to first. Mm. Like, you know, it's just like all the gun violence. Like, it's, it's happening in our community. Right. Like, we have to address and fix our community because we can't expect the outside people to fix us. Like, that's the same, you know, rhetorics that been for years. Like, the black democratics, like, oh, they're going to do this. They're going to, like, no, we have to do it. Let's stop right. looking to other people to do something for us. Like, and... and Economics is a strong point because with economics, it's freedom. You have liberty to travel the world, to have different conversation, mm -hmm. to meet different places, to, to different things. Like, you know, when Farrakhan went to meet um, Gaddafi, mm -hmm. that was a whole... 
thing that could have happened. Mm -hmm. It, it could have been a whole liberation for black people. However, it needs to be more Farrakhan's traveling the world to, to, to have these conversations that show black people well, want to, I mean, yeah, we're and, educated and, and, and we can put we, systems we can in things. place as well. Mark, Mark was true in this before. I mean, he, he, he created the uh, uh, Center for African American Unity and then he, he also had the Muslim Arts Incorporated, but he, when he took his, his struggle international and we started talking to heads of states of Africa and all these places, that's when he was assassinated. But uh, again, you know, these conversations still need to be had. So, I mean, it, it's not like it, it, it stopped. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's not like, you know, this the world's still out there. There's still, you know, heads of state African countries and places like that that accept us and, you know, Consider us out that alone, those brothers. I mean, when I was in Senegal, it was a beautiful place, you know. And they told you the history of, of, of the transatlantic slave trade in Africa and everything like that. When I was in Arabia, you know, it was, you know, again, they said, okay, are you you're African? Oh, you, you're American, but okay, you, where are you from, really? So it, it's clear who you are and where you come from uh, it does have some type of relevance in how you are in this, how you see it in this world. So, it, that, that conversation still needs to be had, and it's, it's that, that movement still needs to be made because it's still uh, it's an ongoing thing. And I, and, and I think, you know, bridging the gap and bridging those uh, of, of, of find, a, find a place of who we are in the world and having a worldview and not just on this plantation of uh, North America, um, we, we gotta, gotta think, start thinking globally and, um, and, and, and go for all types of uh, situations globally because what we do here affects them and what they do there affects us because we're all in this together. I, I feel like um, getting back to the subject of this economic component and perception of poverty, um, the practices that we use, um, the things we place value on, there's something that most people don't really think about um, setting up an emergency fund, mm -hmm. right? So setting up an emergency fund, that means if something happens, I could take care of this out of some stash of assets that I have on hand, right? But also getting assets too. So, so that's, again, cash could be, it could be jewelry, like you said, it could be, you know, I could sell these diamonds, I could sell this jewelry, because I know some people buy it for that reason. Like, yes. it's, it's, they don't go out and they're not flossing, but they like, you know, if I, if I got in a pinch, I could sell this, right? It could be real estate, land, whatever. You could actually uh, borrow against your property, all of that stuff. And we don't talk about that, right? We don't talk about property ownership as a as a investment tool, period, right? We don't, we don't talk about it amongst our community. And I think that's the missing element because you cannot, somebody told me this, as a matter of fact, it's, my, it's uh, one of the people I know, T.L. Cross told me this. He said, you can't gentrify a neighborhood where black people own everything. You can't. So most of us are renters. We're not owners. And we want to stand outside and we want to yell and say, hey, they're not treating us right. And all they do is raise the rent and we're gone. Right? That's our reality. We are actually at the mercy of people. Yeah. The same people we're complaining about. We're fighting over blocks. We're out. We're, out we're, we're, we're at their mercy. Right? Because we didn't... We can't either afford it, or we didn't prioritize owning something. Yeah, putting our resources together and trying to get building by building. Yeah, that's the perceived poverty, right? Right. So, if black man and black woman come together as a family, mm -hmm. then you can own something. Yes. Combine you, 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 salaries. You, you, can't, you can't do this by yourself. Like, right. you know, people buying houses by themselves, the average house is a 30-year mortgage. 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So you're paying for something for 30 years. If you're doing that by yourself and you're halfway through, you're, you're, you're going to break down. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of houses, you Go know, it, it, they foreclosure because it's, it's, it's no support there. Like, it has mm -hmm. to be a team to actually get over the hurdle. And that's what we need to start talking about is more unity within our community, you know, to, to, to build economics because... Mm -hmm. If you got a, a icy well, stand, I got a Frank stand, and right. you got this, and, and we combine. Well, it, it talks about it in the book too. Cooperative well, economics. Mm -hmm. Cooperative economics. You have to you have to work uh, collectively and, and change our economic condition. Right. I mean, because you know every every group does it except us. Right. And if we, uh, you know, connect, 
for empowerment economically is a, is a force that can't be stopped. Well, look at look at priorities. So, so I want to I want to dive a little bit into this priorities. How we how we think, right? And as a whole, and now I've been guilty for this for a certain amount of time too. Get comfortable paying rent, right? You get comfortable, right? So let's say, for instance, your rent is, let's use a round number, $2,000. $2,000 might only get you a studio now, right? But $2,000, right? You're paying $2,000 for rent, and it's 12 months in a year, so that's $24,000, right? And you paid it for 30 years, right? So you're almost talking, what, $24,000 a year, 10 years, $240,000, so you almost talking seven hundred fifty thousand dollars minus. As a matter of fact, it's seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? That's how much you pay in thirty years. But you could have got a house for two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So are you winning? So the thing is, right now, you're looking at right now. I don't have the money for a down payment for a house. That's going to cost you mm-hmm. in rent because. Here's what I know now with laws that they pass. They want to stop succession. I don't know if people know this. You've been a renter. They don't want you to have the right to leave it to your children. An apartment you don't own. This is what the, this is what the owners has pushed, right? So no, you got to leave or, you know, they don't want you. And they say, oh, you put your child on the lease, blah, 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 blah. Okay. How much do you make? That's gonna get you out the apartment. How much do you make? Because this was based off your parents' income, and we don't have that program no more. It's market rate. Three bedroom apartment, I can tell you right now, my, my three bedroom apartment is $4,000 a month. That's house money. You get a mortgage for $2,500 a month. You get a mortgage for $2,500 a month. You can get it less than that. So the, the point is, we, we do things. It's like giving your money away, right? People pay for cable TV, pay, pay for all it. You don't need all those features. You don't need all those channels. Do you need HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, <laughs> Stars? You can only one, watch one at a time, but you want all four of them, hmm. right? We give our money away because we don't, we don't value money the way it should be valued. So one person, and it was actually a white yeah, person. Yeah, like money as empowerment. So, so right. A, a white person told me, I, I learned a lot from white people. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I was in school with them. I had some friends. They tell me, they, I have friends. They tell me a lot of stuff. Yeah, people are people. It's just the so, racism. <laughs> I don't like it. They said, I'd rather look bad and win than to look great and lose. Right. I said, oh, so, wow. Okay. They said, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, other people, I know who they're talking about, they want to be all decked out and still lose. Mm. At the end of the day, good when they pass away, they looked good in every camera angle you saw them on. Mm. And now you got to take up a GoFundMe page to bury them. Or well, the kids got nothing. They have. So, so in, in, the, in the Old Testament, it said, blessed is the man who leaves an inheritance for his children. We forgot that part. Because we live in for the now. And in the now, it's not about your children, it's about you. It's not about the future, it's about you. So you got to have the thousand dollar jeans, right? And you got to look like you're successful. And you got to have the $500 sneakers on, right? Because you want people to see you as successful, but you don't have an emergency fund. You don't have an investment into the future. Education is an investment too, right? Education, people say, oh, what is a piece of paper worth? The piece of paper is worth if you want to have more options, right? More jobs, more opportunities available for you. That education, that piece of paper means something. So once you learn it, nobody can't take it from you. You learned it. Now, if you don't use it, then that's on you. Yeah, I say the information, but not the piece of paper because you can't eat a piece of paper. But it's the information. But the pe- let me tell you, because yeah, it stopped me in my life. It stopped me before. Yeah. This is why I be, this is why I'm right. talking about the piece of paper. It stopped me. Right. For 25 years, I've been in the IT field with certifications, and I was making money. Right. And then as soon as I wanted the job as an executive director, 
I needed the piece of paper. Yeah, a piece of paper. So that's what I mean. It stops you. And I was qualified, hands down, except I didn't have that piece, piece of paper. paper. And that, but it, this, this is, this is, again, we're playing into somebody else's system. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I think a lot of us were qualified and we had the information, we had the knowledge because we, we built a lot of these systems, but we were just always locked out and kept out and marginalized. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was this film uh, about uh, the doctor, you know, he, he uh, performed surgery. on Open heart surgery? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, for, for so long, we, we had the knowledge, we had the know-how, we had the, you know, we had all that, but we were just always locked out, discriminated against. It was always some type of thing that kept us out. It's mm -hmm. their they system. Kept us, yeah, it was their system. And and, and, and uh, that's that's the racism, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, like I said, we're still feeling the effects of it. Mm -hmm. And it, it really hasn't gone away. You know, it's still here, it's still lingering. People, you know, you have these liberals and all these other people say, have fluffy words and other stuff like that. But the problem still exists in yeah. some, some aspects of well, it. Because you can feel the effects of it. I have a quick saying. It's gotten better because you can tell uh, the people, uh, uh, parent generation, they, they tell you it's gotten better. But it's still here. If you have a carnivorous beast who eats flesh and puts it in red bottoms, mm -hmm. it's still a carnivorous beast. That's right. right. So that's a problem that... It's, it's the perception. I told you in the beginning, we said, we said a lot of white people are concerned with critical race theory because they don't want the world to see them as monsters. But that's what you project yourself to be by your actions. So they don't want people to look at them and judge them, but they look at people and judge them all the time, right? That's why they say, we're going to lock you up. You can't be in here. You're going to bring the value. The vi that's judging us, right? right? But they don't want people to look at them based on what they did and say... Oh, y'all are monsters, right? And it's not it's, all it's, of them are monsters, it's, but, yeah, but it's that they want to control the, the perception, right? Sure, they know that. And but that's that's the okay. same thing. If 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 any any rational person or people, you you'll just do the opposite. Everywhere you go, there's always chaos, um, just 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 confusion or uh, or or corruption. So you should keep you out of my neighborhood or my area or my politics or my country. Mm -hmm. But it's, 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 just, it's just the opposite. It's just the reverse because of this uh, uh, psychological hold that we have. And uh, I think that comes a lot through like religion and perception and imagery. And, uh, you know, this white Jesus, you know, uh, <laughs> pure fool, you know, that, that, that mess with a lot of people's psyche. Mm -hmm. And it, like I said, we're still on that little, that, uh, uh, that 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 little that, island, that little <laughs> island of yeah, my yeah, yeah. Well, it, that's why I said economics is important because we need to create our own narrative. Mm. Like we we really don't own nothing, right? So it, we can't. But we, we, we do own. We, but own, we need to own more. Well, to a certain extent, because right. I think it's, it's just a very like, tiny scale. It's, it's, yeah, it's tiny because scale. It's, because it, it was it was it, we we did have it, uh, but like I said, systematically, yeah. it was dismantled and taken, and still. Institutionalized stopped us from doing it. I want to, want to finish it. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you look at when rap was rap, right? You know, you had a, you know, this all these labels, but it was like three major labels that owned all those labels. So mm -hmm. it's like the hand behind, that's high mm -hmm. and like that's controlling it. Right. And if we are not economically sound, then we can't advance. Right. That's that's the bottom line because you know we can have these conversations, but where are we gonna upstream it to? So like, like it, right. you know what I'm saying? Because if we say the wrong word or we say something that's anti this, that's or not that's approved. It, yes, then it, it gets censored by the overseer, right? So economically, we have to be in place to get these inventors and these you know engineers to give us our own platforms. Well, with, without the system, well, it's, like, not, it's, like, not, it's not. It's not. It's not just given. Created. Given. Well, like power's never. Uh, you know. Given. Power's never given. That's taken. taken. It's like he's, he's always taken. It's just, it's just like power's never preceded with nothing without a demand. It never has another will. So I'm trying to use choice words. Though. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's, it's like again, you know, if somebody gives you something, they can take it back. Yeah, so right. we we have to take what's ours because right. it's rightfully ours. It is, it's not like. You know, we're, we're trying to do anything detrimental. We're just trying to uplift, build, and progress. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be on that mind frame. And then the same thing of how, how you know, how hip hop, it was each one teach one. We, and we got to still reach those yeah. those people. So we still got to take that 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 premise and that, that philosophy and keep them moving. I want to tie it into hip hop, just wrap it up on this, but power. 
Power is not just what people perceive it to be. Power is, oh no, you can't say that in that song. Mm -hmm. Because you signed to us now and our funders is not gonna like that. So now you have artists who got a message that may be pure intellectual, but they can't say it. Because somebody cut a check, right? And that check gives them the right to tell you to change them the your power. lyrics. It gives them the, gives power. Them the power to tell you to change your lyrics. Don't say that. Don't say that in that song. No, 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 no. Because now that's going to cause a problem because these people are saying that that's them. That's, that's sorry, And now you're, you're in competition with them. You can't, comp you can't compete with them. So this is what the whole conversation. Listen, I came from the era when we was dropping the power court out the window in the basketball court. That's the era I came from. So I understand what hip hop was and what it's not today. Because anybody is part of it. Anybody takes it. Anybody says what they want to say. But we can't say what we want to say. We are still censored. So is it censored or is it modern day slavery? It's, it's, hey, to the it's, it's, it's slavery level 2.0. Okay. Because what it is is that if you see a people um, making moves to get back something that was taken from them, and you said, okay, I'm going to make a three-dimensional chess game because they master in the two-dimensional chess game. Now I got to make a three-dimensional chess game that's going to keep them trapped so they can't get back because I'm holding what was taken. They can't get this back because I see it as in order for them to get back, they gotta overthrow me. That's how that, that's how people see it, right? I perceive them as they're gonna overthrow me to take back what, what we took. So let's make a more difficult game. It's another game, another distraction, another trap. Let's make a more difficult thing, and we're gonna control all of the things they're allowed to do in it so they never ever right. get back. That's that's if you like a puppeteer, but we're just yeah. trying to take up back our humanity and our just humanness, right. but I mean, uh, you know, that's. I want some land people, too. Yeah, but this, 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 this is this is about being, this is about being human, you know. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. we need food, clothes, and shelter. Yeah, we want to be, you know, live in a society that's 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 safe, uh, nurturing, and, and supportive. So I mean, and and and, and prosperous as well. Right. So I mean, uh, again, you know, we're, we're we're standing for our own humanity, and but because it's been denied us for so long. You know what I mean? And we're just trying to take back our humanity. Or, you know, rightfully our humanity. Just mm -hmm. trying to be a man or a woman or a human being on this planet. Any part in, part in thing, Dominic? Um, I'm just looking at, you know, I was thinking just about the slavery 2.0 because yeah. it's like, they don't got to do the work anymore. Nah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you can't speak out, you know. And these record deals now, it's like, they, they I never... They put an age cap on hip hop. Yes. Right. Yes. Like I know. Like yes. it's like yes. like this ain't. It's not a physical sport. Right. It's about skills. Yes. Yes. Right. It's, it's about skills. So now it's like it's an age cap on. We almost that's old rap. Like it, they labeled it and then just closed the door after the label. They did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be because once again, we don't have ownership. There you go. Right. But that's that's the, that's how that's how you break the chains. Or break or keep people in chains is that when you disconnect the the lineages or the the, the age groups or the you know the young and the old or the old and the upcoming and all this other stuff because you know if you don't know your history you're doomed to repeat it and if you don't have those elders to guide you to watch out for this watch out for that you know you're gonna keep on running to the same mistake. I'm gonna I'm gonna crap it on this, and it's something that I want to see some movement on. So I'm gonna say it because maybe it starts a movement. But um, it's my belief that um, us, our unique situation, we was exploited, raped, tortured, murdered, terrorized. Why are we paying taxes? I, I I want somebody. I need some lawyers. I need somebody to to comment on this. Why are victims? Also tax, and I know the answer is simple. That's how colonialism colonialism works. But we shouldn't be paying taxes to our oppressors, right? We shouldn't. So we need to start arguing these points. Um, and the last thing is, and I think I mentioned this way before we was off the camera. Ex post facto law. So I took several law classes. It's called ex post facto. 
it's in it's written into our constitution and they say you can't go back and sue for the past actions of this country mm -hmm. when they was the, the fight for freedom was happening and they saw that it was going to be it was going to happen they had a conversation and they say once they get rights they're going to sue us for everything we stole so we got to say you can't sue us for everything we stole so they wrote that in so we talk about this great document of this constitution again i'm going to say it's not a great document but we talk about this document it's the crook's handbook right so the handbook says you cannot we freed you from slavery. You're not going to have you in slavery no more, except for punishment for a crime, 13th Amendment, which we still have slavery. But all of the bad things we did to you, you can't get justice because we wrote it in and grandfathered it in, so you can't get it. So who interprets that? The Supreme Court. So who's going to be the one who's going to overturn something? The Supreme Court. <laughs> who is all... Conservative. Well, the conservative is majority. So well, I'm going to leave just, it on that. just got a first black woman Supreme Court justice. But how long? For how, you know, it's just, you know listen, it might be 40 years before you get I'm not, a liberal Supreme Court. Yeah, but it's still, 50 it's, years, it's still 60 years. their system. Because it's still death. It's still their court. I'm not it's, saying. That's, it's, their, it's their kangaroo court. It's, exactly. It's 2022. Mm -hmm. We got to stop saying the first black. We have to be like, they like we just, they in there, they in there. We need to, it's, it's, it's. We can't keep saying the first black but, because but it doesn't mean anything like to break. This I mean, that's what I'm saying. Let me let me let me correct that. It is historical, but because a black person is sitting at the table does not mean black people have power. Right. Right. Because it's one black person or it's two black people. That's like twenty grains of salt and two pieces of pepper. Right. That's what it is. But it 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 makes us hopeful that okay maybe we can. Be part of their system that's set up to benefit them. Why? We're the thinkers that it's like, yo, let's build our own system. Like, that's how I am. You see, like, all this gear and stuff? I, don't own, I own it. Right? So, I want to build something on our own. I don't want to go to funders and people tell me, well, you can't have these kind of conversations. You can't, you can't make films about this. I want to make films about the hood, how it affects us from our perspective, not a perspective of what's palatable for somebody else who ain't us. You understand? And it's not just about trauma. You know, sometimes we laugh in her too, sometimes. But I don't want to be beholden to somebody else to tell me how I could tell what my story. Mm. And you shouldn't be that as artists, um, published book, you know, um, book authors, all that. You should be able to say what you need to say. And if a person doesn't like it, that's on them. Don't buy the book, right? Correct. Don't watch the film. But put the work out. Right now, we're being censored. And once I knew when they was talking about censoring Donald Trump, the effect was going to be sent to black people. I knew what it was going to be. But that, that, that was like a power struggle. Again, mm -hmm. going back to this thing, power, because, uh, you know, uh, like the platform that he was on, Twitter, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You, you had... Uh, you had Elon Musk, you know, actually trying to buy that platform now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, again, the, the thing about economic power, you know, economic brings power. You right. know, you, you're controlling an a, a, a avenue of freedom of speech. Right. Of speech. So that's, right. that's crazy. All right. So let's, you know, anything else you want to say? We just want to wrap it up. We're wrapping up. This is just through my lens. This is through his lens. And this is through our lens. Peace. Right. Peace.